Okay, we will get started. Welcome everybody. I'm Dave Myers, the uh, director of the Berks Alliance, and we welcome you to this spotlight program. Uh, we've been doing these now for a couple of years, uh, highlighting organizations and activities in the community that are significant and important. I'm going to start by introducing John Widenhammer, who is the chair of the Berks Alliance. Hi, Dave. Thanks so much. Appreciate your work behind the scenes to organize our presentation today. I also want to thank Chuck Holder for uh, his willingness to be part of the spotlight uh, today. Uh, we have a lot of familiar faces here on the call, so I'll just say quickly that uh, the Berks Alliance is a collaboration of anchor institutions in uh, Berks County, and we're really focused on community development with uh, a goal to make sure that uh, we're improving the health, wealth, and education attainment of the citizens of Berks County. But relative to entrepreneurship, that's something that we've been particularly focused on. And Dave, maybe you could speak later to some of the things that, that we're uh, doing to bring organizations that are focused on entrepreneurship together. But, you know, Berks County has a long history of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs. Uh, if you look back over at least the last 200 years. And one thing that's I'm reasonably confident of is that the the next Toyota plant or the next Tesla plant probably is not going to be located in Berks County. So we're going to be dependent on growing our economy and our community through small business. And this is true nationally and through entrepreneurship. So the topic uh, that we have today is particularly poignant relative to you know, how do we start small businesses? How do we keep them thriving? How do we keep them in Berks County? Because in all likelihood, that's going to be the, the the bedrock of our uh, economy going forward. So with that, Dave, I'll turn it back to you for the particulars. And thanks, everybody, for being with us today. Thank you, John. So let me uh, cover quickly what we how we do this. Um, we will move in a, in a minute to our presenter, Chuck Holder from uh, Entrepreneur Connection. Chuck will then do his presentation. We'll ask you to keep your cameras on, uh, but mute your microphones. We'd like to be able to see people, but not hear them. We, we'll hear you eventually. Um, we ask you to use the uh, chat function at the bottom of the screen uh, to submit questions and comments, and we'll get to those when Chuck gets done with his presentation. Um, any questions and comments that we get that we don't get answered, we will share them with Chuck and ask him to uh, to uh, respond and reply to them. We copy, we record the uh, program. We will send a copy of the recording to everybody who registers. We normally get more people registering for this than actually have the time to show up at, over lunch hour. Uh, we also post it on the, the recording on the Berks Alliance website. And we uh, will share it with our friends at BCTV. Um, so you'll be able to see this. Um, glad you're here to join us. It's a very interesting topic. Let me speak to the context that John offered. Uh, the Berks Alliance is one of over, I think there are 15 of us, 15 organizations that have come together to try to create a stronger, more vibrant network for entrepreneurs and startup businesses in Berks County. Uh, the idea being that we can do even a better job than we, what we've done historically in terms of supporting these businesses by collaborating, by sharing resources, uh, by enhancing what each other's doing. And one of the things we're taking on here in our spotlight program is highlighting some of those organizations. We'll have another highlight of, of one of the partners next week. This time we're gonna be sharing with Chuck Holder, an entrepreneur connection. And Chuck, with that, I will turn it over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. I guess it's probably going to uh, make the most sense to give you a little background of, of um, how I got into entrepreneurism and, and kind of that path. And it actually started before I was a, a, a teenager. I knew at a very, very young age that I never wanted anybody to control my destiny. And I always knew at a very young age that I just couldn't do that. I was very focused on um, being able to control that. And um, that's all well and good. And I you know, got through high school, went to college for a couple of years and, and, and left college after two years and 
um, started my business career. Um, the only problem with that is uh, nobody in my family was in business. Um, I didn't have any business experience. And uh, my mother was a medical supervisor at AT&T. My father was a plumber. And I came home and thought, what am I going to do? And um, I think I just wanted to spend time with my father. And I got into the plumbing business. Uh, my father always worked for other people. So I kind of learned to trade from him, which was uh, kind of interesting because when I left college, I really didn't know the difference between a slotted screwdriver and a Phillips screwdriver. So uh, within two years, I had my own business and my father started working for me. And I basically uh, kind of went to the swimming pool and walked down to the deep end of the pool and climbed up on the high dive and dove off and there was no water in the pool. And I, uh, um, I learned typically how to run a business um, on a trial and error basis, which uh, probably about 85% of the people who are entrepreneurs can relate to. Um, and I guess it's it's a very, it's great if you can say you failed your way to the top, even though I don't think I'm even close to being at the top. Um, but it's really a stupid philosophy. And it costs a lot of time and it costs a lot of money. And I, um, and quite honestly, in the beginning of my business life, I, I was not a businessman, I was a plumber in business. And I, I made a commitment um, when I started to realize that uh, once my father passed away, I had no desire to be in the plumbing business. Um, I don't know if I've lost anybody here. My screen's getting a little funny. I hope you can all still hear me. Still hear me. So anyway, I, I uh, started to make a commitment to get into the, to become a legitimate uh, a business person. And my brother came to me after 10 years and said, let's go into the airport transportation and limousine business. And I looked at my brother and said, you're crazy. We live in Reading. Who, who goes anywhere from Reading? And he had actually found a business to buy for $150,000. And we looked at it and um, I said, well, you know, that's a lot of money. Why don't we just start our own business? And after we looked into it, uh, logistically, because of all the uh, complications with the PUC and all the um, you know, all the things you have to go through to get a license, it actually made more sense to pay twice as much for the business as it was worth because we were grandfathered into everything. Chuck, I'm going to ask you for a stop for a quick second. Yes. Apparently, Gregory Fleming has decided to share his screen with us. Okay. Um, and I'm going to ask him to take it down. All right. Okay. Got it. Yeah, it's still there. Well, I'm trying. I'm not sure how you got to do that. There we go. Okay, okay. thank you. Yep. So anyway, uh, so my brother would end up in the in the limousine business, and from day one, we're kind of rocking and rolling. Uh, the the business we bought was a mom and pop business that turned away more work than they than they took in. Um, Dave would drive, and I'd work the office, and vice versa, and things were great. Um, and two and a half months into it, my brother came home from JFK, went to bed, and never woke up again. Um, we had just lost our mother at 61, our father at 67, and just never, ever, ever dreamed that anything like this could happen. I was 38, he was 44. Um, and besides the fact my, uh, uh, my heart was broken again, uh, it made me realize how uh, unprepared I was as a business person. We didn't have key insurance on one another. Um, my brother had never been married, um, didn't have a family, didn't have a will. Um, I ended up owning the business with my sisters, which I thought nothing of, it, you know, that's okay. And, and, you know, a couple of years later, that created a problem that I didn't ever think could happen in my family. Um, and fortunately we were able to, my, my older sister and I were able to overcome that before she passed away because, um, uh, I don't know what, how that would have made me feel if we weren't able to put our, our, uh, our lives back together. So, it taught me there's so much there's so much involved with business and it's it's so much more than just making money I, you know everybody's success is up to them you know everybody determines what their what success means to them and it's all different and i get that um but i i certainly learned a lot of lessons along the way and then the next best thing that happened was you know I, i've started nine businesses been involved in a lot of partnerships uh, there's a lot of personal uh, stories to tell, and I can match stories with anybody. Uh, but in the limousine business, like I said, even with 50 drivers, I was still driving every two or three day, and every day was a lesson. Um, you you actually uh, 
it, it was fascinating. It was, I, I would put that education up uh, up against anything, sitting in those cars with business people from all over the world. And quite honestly, it took me 20 or 25 years to, to shut up and, and, and listen and start to listen to people. And it was, it was just awesome. And so uh, that business kind of ran its course. And um, uh, it was certainly seven days a week, 24 hours a day. If my wife and I slept without being interrupted uh, twice in one week, that was a really good week. And when I decided I wanted my life back together, I, um, you know, I, I did, wasn't sure what I was going to do. And I decided I wanted to share all the lessons I learned and uh, all the things I learned from the relationships I built uh, along the way. Uh, it's the one thing I, I'm, I'm very well aware of the things I do well. I know what I don't do well in building relationships I had been doing since I was a, a young person. And um, I wanted to leverage all those relationships I, I had, uh, you know, uh, built during uh, my business life and also the people I had met in the limousine business. Uh, the problem was um, most people think that because I, I probably talk too much and I do talk fairly well, that I'm a good salesman and I'm not. Um, I'm not overly comfortable talking about myself uh, and I'm certainly not a professional salesman. I'm not a closer. I mean, there are salespeople that are good salespeople and then there are or, or people like me that can build relationships, but I'm not really a closer. And I was struggling in my in my consulting business. And how EC got started was somebody said, well, you need to go to a referral group. So I went to a local referral group and I saw value there and joined the group. And within a short period of time, I was uh, president of the chapter. And within a short period of time after that, I was actually hired by the uh, um, uh by the referral group to be what they called, I think it was an area director to open up chapters in the Lehigh Valley. So I did that for a year and a half. And um, it was great because I was a business consultant and basically people were coming to my meetings and I could pick and choose clients, which was made it very, um, uh, very easy to run my business. Um, but there were some things and I'm in no way or shape or form uh, bashing referral groups uh, their, their success rates speak for themselves. They're, they're very good for some businesses, not so good for others, but they're, they, they certainly provide a, a, a tremendously valuable service. What I couldn't do and how entrepreneurs got started was there were just some, some little things that I, I, I just, uh, didn't agree with. I, they didn't allow competition within their, most of them, um, that I'm aware of don't allow competition within their chapters. And I always thought that, well, you know what, if you're afraid of competition, it's for one of two reasons. Uh, one is you don't believe in yourself. And let's face it, we all go through that in our lifetime. Um, and if you don't believe in yourself, go get help now, because there's no there, there's nothing wrong with that. We all go through that in our lifetime. Or you don't believe in your product or service. So find something you do believe in. And if you have a competitor that's doing doing better than you are, then, you know, maybe it's good just to learn something from them as well. So I didn't like the fact that there wasn't any comp uh, that they didn't allow competition within the group. Um, and they were pretty strict on attendance. Um, if you missed two weeks, the next meeting you went to, you had to stand in the corner for the first 15 minutes or something. I, uh, it, it was just kind of ridiculous because I've always had the it's always been my my opinion that if you don't take care of your business, your business can't take care of you. And if you need to be somewhere else that rather than at a, a referral group meeting, then you need to take care of your business. So uh, that was, you know, just some of the things uh, they didn't allow outside speakers, um, which I think, you know, if somebody's bringing value to your group, um, let anybody speak. If they're bringing value, they're bringing value. Um and then the, the what was the last thing I just thought of? That went out of my mind for a second. Um, oh, I'll think of it in a second. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Well, the attendance the attendance thing was, uh, you know, I've always looked at it like some people value or, or light a or brighten a room when they walk into it, and some people brighten a room when they walk out of it. And if somebody brightened our meetings once or twice a month, we were happy to have them once or twice a month. So those were just some of the things that you know I I didn't really like. And the last thing was um, when you're when you're forced to give referrals, some of them are very questionable. And to be quite honest with you, when I started a group, if I was willing to refer 25% of the people in the group, that was a lot. Um, I, I, I've spent a lot of time and effort building what I think is a good reputation. 
Um, and that doesn't mean there aren't people out there that tell you I'm an idiot because you can't please everybody. And it took me a long time to get over that, but I have. Um, you can't please everybody. Um, but I also know that a lot of my business is built on referring the right people to the right people. And I, I guard that with a lot of diligence. Um, I always try to make sure that it is the um, it's best on both sides, that I'm, I'm giving somebody the best qualified referral. Um, I do not refer friends unless they are the best qualified. They have the best qualifications. I don't do it. Um, uh, when I give those referrals, I don't care if business takes place or not. That's none of my business. But I do expect that it will be handled professionally. So with all that, that's kind of what got me started into the uh, Entrepreneur's Connection because it became very apparent that the organization I was working for, uh, they were either going to fire me or I was going to quit. So it was a matter of which came first and they fired me, which was okay. And I was in the process of opening up a new chapter and I said to everybody, I said, look, here's the deal. I said, if you want to stay with this organization, you need to contact this person at this phone number and that's fine. But I want to tell you, uh, I am starting something new and you're welcome to come with me if you'd like. And um, they all came along for the ride. And it actually took us a year and a half. Uh, not Maybe not quite that. It was at least a year till we really figured out what we were really all about. Um, and the things that I've mentioned were, were non-negotiable. Uh, our organization, Entrepreneurs Connection, was going to have those qualities in. Um, the second thing was, uh, you know, we established pretty uh, early on that we wanted to, to give back to the community. Um, the community gives to us, we wanted to give back. And in the first couple of years of Entrepreneurs Connection, we actually started, our, our first community project was at the main library at Fifth and Franklin Streets here in Reading. They had three or four large cement planters out in front of the building that had uh, basically become trash cans. And so we cleaned them up and and, and uh, replanted nice flowers and trees and bushes in there, not trees, but bushes and flowers, excuse me. And then our second project was um, they had a garden behind the main library between the sidewalk and the parking lot that had become pretty much of uh, uh, just a lot of trash and everything else. So we completely dug that up, uh, replanted that with trees, flowers and bushes. And that was our second project. And then our third project um, became, um, there was an empty lot across the street from Racket, 2nd and Franklin Streets. And uh, the lot was actually owned by ATV Bakery who had purchased it so they could use it for a parking lot for their employees. And the city said, no, you can't do that. So basically it became um, an eyesore and um, you know there it was overgrown and uh, a lot of trash and every uh, all kinds of things. It actually was a lot that uh, at one time was three houses that they knocked down and just threw everything into the basement. And um, so we approached the we approached the owners of ATV Bakery to see what they if we could build a park there. And that was kind of interesting because they are their response was and they're great, great people. Uh, they are wonderful people. And they said, well, as long as we don't have any liability, um, you can do what you want with it. It turns out the Reading Housing Authority, I believe it was. Uh, owned the sidewalk, and it actually took 18 months to work out the legalities to for the three organizations to be able to build the park. And once we got that, we called it Reading Rising Park, and we planted uh, over 700 trees, flowers, and bushes. Uh, we put solar lighting in. We um, put a mural up and um, chess table, meditation benches, and it and it really, really was a nice gateway into the city of Reading, because that is a major inter, uh, intersection coming into the city. Uh, <clears throat> and that was a, a, a great project. Uh, took a lot of time, uh, took a lot of effort, uh, but we got it done. Uh, the city has taken it over in the last year, so it's not ours anymore, but uh, we do continue that that's going to, uh, you know, be a, a great um uh, a great say a great segue into the city. So that that was the community side of it. We haven't done anything for the last two or three years, and we're looking for the next thing. But uh, when that comes, we'll uh, we'll we'll figure it out. So that was the the thing with the community. And then as far as the members of EC, that was all about finding people that were serious about their business, people who truly wanted to get from where they were 
or if they were starting a business to really understand what it takes um, to be a, an entrepreneur and a small business people. And quite honestly, in my business, uh, as a as a, um, a consultant, as a strategic consultant, my probably my best work is talking people out of going to, into business because they really, really don't understand what it takes. They they really don't have a clue. And you know, it's better to spend five thousand dollars now than lose fifty or a hundred thousand or a quarter million dollars um, not understanding what it really is all about. Um, and I I say this ad nauseum. Uh, because I, 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 I'm very, I feel very strongly about this. I, I, I grew up in the sixties and six in the sixties and seventies at 11th and Penn, a half a block away from city park. And, and, um, in those years, we grew up with a baseball, a football and a basketball. And I, and I still love sports. I, I, I'm still very much a, a, a sports addict. Uh, but the reality is small business people are my real heroes. They really are because it's not easy. It's not what everybody thinks it is. It's not what your family thinks it is. It's not what your friends think. It, 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 they don't have a clue what you go through as a small business person. And, uh, you know, I like to share with people who want to become small business people that, you know, they understand the trials and tribulations of that. Um, but also, um, you know, for me, the biggest aspect of that is, that's probably your one opportunity to live life on your terms. And that's a really nice way to be able to live your life. One of the things, and this was way before I ever thought I was going to have a, a family, was I knew nobody was ever going to tell me I couldn't go see a, a, my, my kids in a Christmas pageant at school or go see a, a baseball game or a track meet or a play. I, nobody was ever going to tell me I couldn't do that. And those are some of the things about having your own business that, you know, the, the, the things that you control uh, and I always, I always wanted control of that. And that's what led me into this. So in looking for, for good members for EC, uh, the whole, the whole uh, dynamic behind it is for the members to share their business knowledge, their business experience, their personal knowledge, their personal experience to help one another get better at who we are and what we do every week. Um, it, you can believe this, you cannot believe this, but I, I truly believe every day is an opportunity to get better at who we are and what we do. And I'm 68 and I'm still looking. Um, and I think every day is an opportunity to do that. And so the the idea that you have people that are willing to share, uh, certainly not just the good things uh, that they've done in business or in their lives, but also the things that are questionable. Uh, I don't want people to make the mistakes I made in business. And, you know, it's like I tell people, I've made $30,000 in an hour and I've been a quarter million dollars in debt with no money coming in. I've ridden the roller coaster. I know what it's like. When I was going through financial dire straits, I didn't sleep a year and a half. I, I, I'm telling you right now, I didn't sleep a whole night for a year and a half. And uh, I can vividly remember every every night, be, every morning between 3 and 4.30, I'd wake up and it was like I was in Vegas where I've never been. I've been to Reno. I've never been to Vegas but I'd see these bright shining lights of everybody I owed money to. And it was horrible. And I don't want people to go through that if they don't have to. And I'm willing to share the things that, uh, you know, that I've learned along the way to be able to help one another get better at who they are and what they do. And that's really the whole premise. Um, and the, the probably the, the, the best testimonial I can give you about Entrepreneur's Connection is that on several occasions, uh, people were able to bring up very personal things in their life. Um, and I can tell you there wasn't a dry eye in the room. Uh, and to be, be able to do that with friends and family is hard enough. To be able to do that with people that you meet with once a week, uh, it's pretty extraordinary that, 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 that there is that much trust in the room. Um, and it's, it, it's kind of, it, it sets the tone for, uh, what we are all about, because uh, everything affects our business life. Everything. Our, our, you know, I, I hear people say, well, you got to separate family and business. It doesn't happen. It's just not reality. The, the weather, politics, so many things affect our businesses, our businesses on a daily, on a, uh, uh, on a daily basis. And um, so we do this through uh, masterminds. 
So if anybody's having um, something happening in their business, it could be good, bad, or indifferent. They're just looking for uh, more information to make a better qualified decision. Um, I share this at EC. I share this in my consulting business. You can never have enough information to make a good qualified decision. And quite often somebody will say, well, I have the best attorney in the world. And uh, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad you have the best attorney in the world. But if they're the best attorney in the world, you know, you're certainly not their only client. And do you think they're thinking of you every day? And that attorney may be very liberal or very conservative and maybe being one or the other in your business isn't the best thing for you right now. So having a mastermind and getting to have 15 or 20 people share their thoughts and ideas um, and instead of just your own gives you a better idea and more information to make better, better qualified decisions. Masterminds are huge if, if you use them right. They, they, they are so powerful. And, and it's not that everything you hear is, is, is uh, gospel. Uh, the only real, one of the only real demands we have at, at Entrepreneur's Connection is that everybody's honest with one another. And if somebody doesn't believe in what you're doing, they're going to tell you and they're going to tell you why. It, it's, it's constructive criticism. It's not made to hurt or belittle. It's just good information. And you can take that information and do whatever you want with it. Does it make sense? Yes, maybe I need to pivot here. Um, does it make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. I'm comfortable where I'm going with that. But that's the power of a, of a real mastermind is being able to be honest with some with one another and 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 taking those uh, those little um, bits of information because uh, every every decision we make as business owners has a consequence. Every one. Um, and if you're not making the best qualified decisions, you're you're hurting your business. So that's why masterminds are huge. The second thing we do are we do um, uh, we do uh, presentations. Everybody in that room is a subject matter expert at something. And if they have some information that they want to share with the group that they, they think is benefit, beneficial for the group, um, you know, they, they share that. And usually there's, um, you know, something always good becomes of that. And, and if I can just backtrack a second, um, even though a lot of times, uh, all the time, uh, a mastermind is specifically for somebody, if you're participating in that, you're going to learn something. Of that. You're, you're going to come out of that a better person because you're going to learn something that, that's going to help you in your business. So uh, presentations are big. Uh, and then we do panel discussions, uh, maybe a topic of the week, something that's come up in business in the last couple of days or weeks. And, and we'll discuss that. And it's more of a panel discussion that's helpful. And then and then lastly, um, we every new member gets a, a whole meeting to introduce themselves to the group. I know when I was involved with uh, uh, with referral groups, um, it, it took a lot of time sometimes to get acclimated to the group, uh, for people to get to know you, which is their whole premise is the better, you know, the better we get to know you, the easier it is to give referrals to you. Um, so what we do is when somebody joins the group, they get a whole meeting to tell us about who they are, where they've come from, where they are now and where they hope to be. Uh, cause the sooner they're acclimated into the group, the easier it is to figure out how we're going to help one another. And, and that's very important. So we, we want to get people uh, integrated into the group as soon as possible. Um, some of the things that I've had happen, and, and, and I'm going to end with this, but when you talk about things that make a difference, uh, and sometimes it's just little things. Um, I know I was, uh, we were having a meeting one day and um, somebody was saying something nice about me. And I immediately started to deflect it as was my nature and said, okay, okay, that's great. Let's move on. And afterwards, one of the members of the group came up to me and said, why do you do that? And I said, why do I do what? And she said, well, anytime somebody tries to say something nice about you, you immediately try to deflect it and move on. And I said, well, I don't really need to hear it. And, uh, you know, I'm a little uncomfortable. And she looked at me, she said, that's not about you. She said, that person that's speaking about you is getting joy saying these things about you and you're actually taking away their joy. And I looked at her and I said, I understand. And it's the last time it happened. It's the last time it happened. And when somebody does, and on, the, on those rare occasions when that happens, I'll look at somebody and I'll listen. And when they're done, I'll say, thank you. I really appreciate that means a lot to me. And it was that little thing that made a, that, that made a big difference in my life. 
And the other thing that happened um, was one day somebody was speaking and I finished their sentence for them. And afterwards, another uh, young lady in the group came up to me and where have I heard these words before? And she said, why do you do that? And I, and I said, why do I do what? She said, you are always cutting people off. And I said, really? She said, you do it all the time. I said, well, nobody's ever said anything. And she said, well, you're actually pretty good at it, but you do do that. And it took me a year and a half to stop doing that. I didn't do it. I, it was just who I was. And it was very interesting because I would find myself doing it. And then slowly, you know, slowly, I would say, excuse me, I, I didn't mean to uh, speak. Uh, please finish. And it literally took a year and a half till I, I, I was able to put that behind me. Um, on occasion, I'll do it every once in a while now. And I'll uh, as soon as I catch myself, I'll excuse myself. But the, the, there's so many little things that we can learn about ourselves and business and how to get better. And sometimes it's the little things that make a big difference. And, and that's kind of, um, you know, what we bring to the table at Entrepreneurs Connection. Um, to get you up to date, uh, and I've said this in the last couple of weeks, and, and I say this and I mean it with every fiber in my being is, I'm in business for almost 45 years. I can honestly tell everyone on this call that I have never been this excited about being in business. And I've been blessed with some, some incredible clients. Uh, I've been blessed to become affiliated with everything that's happening here at Alvernia, to be involved with the launch box at Penn State. And these young entrepreneurs that are coming up, these students are amazing. Um, I see when I hear people say kids these days, and it's like, let, let me take show you some of the people I grew up who, who are still the same knuckleheads they were 45 years ago. Um, so there, there's, there's a lot happening. What we're doing as a group is, is awesome. Um, Entrepreneurs Connection, we got in, we, we um, got connected with uh, 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 Sembo. Um, uh, and Hayden, uh, Hayden Kradoff and what he's doing. And we're creating this video library. We're live streaming our meetings. Um, this is all really, really exciting stuff. And as, as John mentioned, what's happening in and around Reading is it's awesome. And um, I wasn't, I just thought about mentioning this. And, and one of the things that I can tell you is, uh, especially when I had my plumbing business, I've been dealing um, I, I know what code service is like and what it was like dealing with Reading for years. And it was bad. I mean, they actually for many, many years took pride into having businesses not come into this city. I was actually on 10 pro at least 10 projects um, in the plumbing business where people had financing, uh, they had plans, they had uh, people getting ready to start projects and finally said, I don't need this place. I'm out of here. And uh, a lot of the people at the city thought that was great, you know, and then you have another empty product uh, uh, property with no uh, tax income or anything coming in. And that was that was the attitude for a long time. And with what's happening now, it is just really exciting about being in business for on so many levels uh, as the, you know, the ones I mentioned. And um, we have a lot to look forward to. We have a, a lot to look forward to. And, you know, kind of this initiative is is a great place for people because there are a lot of people that. Um, you know, want to start businesses and they're thinking about it and there's so many different places to go. Where do I go? And every one of us have some value somewhere, but some of us have more value for certain individuals now than others. And that's where they should be guided to. So that's kind of where we are. Um, uh, so uh, uh, I'm open for questions or suggestions or thoughts or ideas or whatever. Yeah, you know, let me let me start, Chuck. Um Describe for us a little bit more about who is a member of Entrepreneur Connection. What what types of businesses, how, what size of businesses, um, where they're located? Well, it, it, it's a very good question. Um, one of the things we have not done a very good job of doing is marketing who we really are, because a lot of people think we're just for startups. Uh, and we're also not just for businesses. We have entrepreneurs, we have business owners, we have consultants. Um, and so anybody, to, to answer that really, anybody who really knows that you can get better at who you, who you are and what you do is a potential candidate for us. 
And that's really it. We the the one thing, and and this is kind of amazing because uh, what's interesting um, over the years we've had, I, I'm sure we've had over 150 members, and we've had, I don't know, a thousand visitors. I don't know, but because of of our structure, uh, there are people that come to our meetings, and if they're if and they think it's a referral group, and and trust me, there are a lot of people that come to those those meetings. And you just know they're there to see how they can get their hands in everybody's pocket and get what they can and get out and move on to the next one. Uh, and that's OK. That, 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 I'm, not, I'm not belittling that. If that's, what, if that's their mode of doing business, that's their prerogative. Um, but people that come to meetings at EC never come back if they're that type of person because they know that it's not about it. it, it success isn't just about making money. It's about being a complete person. And you, you can there, there's just a different aura there. So it's not for everybody uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but it's for people who are open to change and and getting better. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, no, I think that that was helpful. Um, you know, are there particular are there most of them service industry businesses or. Oh, we no, I can't say that. We've had all kinds. It, it's hard to say. Yeah. There, there's What's a diverse base. Yeah, there are. Um, I, I, you know what? There, there have been uh, technological business. There, there's been uh, trades. Um, it, it's hard to put a finger on it, to be honest with you. I, I will share this. The one frustration that I've had over the years, because um, they keep telling me we've been around seventeen years, and that. I don't know that I like that, but it's probably true. <laughs> it just there you go, dating ourselves again. Um, what what one of the frustrations has been over the years is that at times it becomes a support group for mediocrity. And what I mean by that, there are people that join with the idea that, hey, I'm here so you can help me go from here to here. And two, three years later, they're still here. Mm -hmm. And again, it's their business. That's their right. And they've told me that when I asked them why uh, to mind my own business. And I get that. But why are you here? Um, so that that is probably more than anything else. That has been my one frustration over the years is not being able to help people take the next steps that they're telling me they want to take. Um, so it's, it, 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 you know, it's it's not all a, a better roses there. There are issues as in any organization. And for me, that's the number one thing. Um, but again, to, to try to pinpoint um, a certain kind of a business or industry, we've had all kinds. Okay. Do you have a, a strategy or how do you go about recruiting new members? How do you go about identifying who might be a potential member? Actually, we're really just starting that. We recently did a business symposium at Alvernia, which was very, very successful. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm basing that on the feedback that we got. Um, actually, when I do an event like that, I base it on three things. Um, the first thing is the uh, uh, the body language of the of the of the attendees, and we had great speakers. We had eight great speakers, uh, but I'm always watching the audience more than I am the, the speakers. And I only saw one yawn um, in two hours, and I thought that was good. Um, and uh, but the body language was really, really very favorable afterwards. Um, there were seven or eight people that came up and, and uh, said how pleased they were with it. And normally what, normally what I have found is that if most people aren't happy with it, they just don't say anything, they just leave. And so the third indicator I have is how long do people hang around when the event's over? And we actually had people, but, uh, quite a few people there an hour and a half later. Um, so we're, we're, we're starting to get the word out. Um, uh, by doing, we're going to be doing another symposium in the fall. And in between there, we're going to be doing um, uh, more targeted uh, presentations. I've had three or four people that came up to me afterwards that wanted to do targeted um, uh, presentations. So we're going to start focusing on those. Um, and also with what we're doing with Sembu and the video library uh, and live streaming the event. So um, it, it's a great question, and actually, I'm glad you asked that because we're looking at a whole new way of getting uh, entrepreneurs' connection out there. So um, I guess a, a, an easier way to ask the question is, do you find them or do they find you? They've been finding us more than we've been finding them. Okay. Okay. Now, I can tell you... Um, 
years ago, uh, when we first started this, we regu regularly had 20 to 25 people come to the meetings. And that was great, but it's too much for a for a uh, um, a mastermind because there's too many people. You can't manage it, and everybody doesn't get a chance to participate. So what we figured out is that the a good chapter uh, is to have about twenty members because you know fourteen or fifteen are going to show up every week, and if you're having a mastermind, that's a real nice sweet spot. So I haven't really we haven't really been out recruiting people, and when we've knew. When we've needed people, we we do an open house or something, and we would routinely get four or five people to join through that. Uh, but right now, um, we do have a new initiative to bring new members in, so we're going to be looking for them. Um, and and I don't know if I should say this because I'm I'm not quite sure how we figured out how to do it yet, but we're working on it. Is um, it it's not about quality; it's about uh, quantity. It's about quality. And trying to do a better job of focusing on bringing the right people into the group, uh, both for their success and the group's success. Um, I, 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 I know I mentioned this, but I can't say it enough. Is It is frustrating when people join and, and you just don't see them getting any value out of it. And that's one of the things I'm hoping we can get better at. So how do you, how do you measure the success of the Entrepreneur Connection? How do you know that you've made a difference? When somebody leaves the group because they've gotten what they needed to take the next steps that they've need is a big one, believe it or not. Uh, you know, a lot of people have come there because they're in between jobs and they're not sure, sure what they want to do or their their business has grown and they they don't have time to come anymore. Um, you know, and I, I would have, I would imagine that most of us can relate to this. And probably the biggest thing is um when somebody comes to you and said, you know, I've been able to do this and I couldn't have done it without you guys. Uh, you know, there, there are certain things in business you can't put a price on. And when you've helped somebody take next steps that they recognize and attribute to you, um, there's not a better feeling in the world. You've, you've mentioned masterminds. Could you talk about that a little bit more, what it is, how it works? Well, um, I, I, I will tell you, uh, that we have done masterminds on everything that you can think of. And we've done a few of masterminds, quite a few masterminds on things you've never thought of. <laughs> it's it's pretty interesting. So again, if something's happening in your business, you're looking to hire somebody, you're looking to fire somebody, um, you, you're you thinking about buying another business or you're starting to think about winding down. What do I have to do? What are my next steps? What's my, what are my exit strategies? Um, we've done, one of the guys came to a, a meeting one day and said, does my beard affect my business? So we act, that actually turned into a two meeting mastermind. Um, that you can mastermind anything. Uh, if you're, if, if you're making a decision in your business, uh, good, bad, or indifferent, and you're looking to make the best possible decision, that's what a mastermind is for. How does it work? Um, they basically, we what, and we've gotten better at this, is uh, we try to uh, make sure we understand uh, what they're there for, what exactly are you trying to get answers about, because uh, we've had people that have started masterminds and 10 minutes into it, you're still not quite sure what they want or what they're looking for because they really haven't thought through it and explained it. So the most important thing is that there's a complete understanding of what the issue is and what you're looking answers, what, you know, what's the question or what's the problem you're trying to solve so that there's uh, an understanding of that. And then, then that is, a lot of it then comes into the moderation um, so that uh you know, anybody can go off on a tangent and sometimes you have to, you know, say, you know, that's a great, that, that's a great answer. We need to move on so that you keep it flowing so that the information is, is being, sh all the necessary information is being shared. Um, and they can get testy at times. Um, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, somebody was so proud because it was the first time they had done a million dollars in business in their business. And they were so proud of that. And Somebody said, well, if you did it right, you could be doing $10 million. <laughs> it didn't go over well. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, yeah, and so they they're, they can be, you know, and, and that, again, that's that's making sure to the best of our ability that everybody's open to them. Uh, I can tell you right now, there were two very successful people 
Um, I don't know if this matters or not. They were both men uh, and they did masterminds and they had a, a pretty fair degree of success. And they didn't want to hear anything that anybody had to say that they didn't think they didn't think they made any mistakes. And they both left the group shortly thereafter. So you have to be open minded. Um, you, you have to be willing to listen uh, to constructive criticism and what people honestly think. That's what that's what creates a good mastermind atmosphere. Uh, may I say something? Sure. Um, so um, I'm Sandy Cosma and I joined Entrepreneur Connection um, before COVID. Let's put it like that. And I can tell you uh, from my experience, if you're interested. So uh, I was born in a communist country. I came to United States in 2001. So I knew only that kind of job, uh, W-2. And then slowly by steadily, I moved to the opposite. I'm a sort of, um, I'm a contractor right now and I work in the insurance business. So I needed uh, clients and I need to understand the entrepreneur, the business people mind. And I started to join all sorts of networks and I didn't like it because they were so artificial. And somehow I met Chuck. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is how I joined his network, his entrepreneur connections. And I was actually open mouth. How authentic that network was. So they have real discussions there and I loved it. Nice. So I went there just to learn how a business uh, owner thinks uh, was their problem and how I can help them. And uh, that helped me a lot. Oh, great. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Sandy. Very, very good. Chuck, you mentioned uh, the panel discussions that you have. What what types of topics do you cover in those panel discussions? One of the interesting things that happened a couple of years ago, and I'll, and I'll never forget this, um, somebody did a presentation on taxes. And it turned into, it, it became a political presentation. And in five minutes, literally in five minutes, I watched this room divide like the North and the South. There was a Mason Dixon line right up the right up the middle of the table. Uh, and this was a room where, uh, as mentioned, uh, people care about one another and we're all there for one another's successes. And I sat there in amazement watching how this room just divided. And at the end of the meeting, I said, well, that answers that question. We're now going to do a meeting on politics and how it affects our business. Uh, three, pe four people said, you can't do that. And I said, yes, I can. Because if you didn't see what just happened, we need to do that. Um, and a few people said, well, I won't be there. And my response to that was, well, that's your problem, not mine. I don't care if you're there or not. It's a problem. So it's it's now that's that's an extreme, but it was very interesting because it was something that had to be addressed. And it actually turned out to be a very productive and a very, very good meeting. It really did. And there were some people that didn't come. So it can be anything. Uh, what do we do one on? Oh, oh, 68 hertz. I forget things so easy. I'll, I'll, I'll share that. I, 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 we've done, we've done a lot of them. It, it, anything that's really happening in the business world today, we've done them on AI. Um, yeah, we had a really good uh, presentation. Uh, George Gerhardt did a really good one on, um, uh, oh, uh, investing, and it's a special word that he used. That was very interesting. Um, so it, it's more or less to start a discussion to get everybody's opinions rather mm -hmm. than somebody having a certain issue they're looking at. We're looking at a topic rather than an issue, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, if you could get me some examples, I'm mean, that'd be great. I'll share them with everybody. I, if you, yeah, yeah, I, I will get you five or 10 of them. 
to share. Uh, how can people see your live stream? How do they get engaged? Uh, it's it's all done through the Entrepreneurs Connection website. You go to entrepreneur entrepreneursconnection.us and click on the videos tab. Um, and that's that uh, you can uh, we're there at 8 10 on a Thursday morning. And uh, there's also a video library that we're starting to to build up. Uh, and then you can watch uh, you can watch previous presentations. Um, you can also see the entire symposium from about a month ago. And also uh, on the website, you can see the uh, individual presentations that were done. Um, so again, we're, we're building up that video library. So you're doing one tomorrow? It will be live streamed tomorrow morning, yes. What are you, what are you going to talk about? Uh, tomorrow morning, we have a special speaker. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself, please? Thanks, Chuck. I'm the special speaker for tomorrow. <laughs> uh, um, and I'll be presenting to the group on the Spotlight PA Burks project. Cool. Good. Yeah. We had a uh, we had a presentation of, oh, this is about two and a half, three months ago, where there was a, a gentleman who, whose wife had a, um, a, a, a substantial gym business. I think she had 800 members um, and COVID shut her down. And um, she took steps to make it as safe as possible. Uh, side B to every side A, but the story was we we made this gym uh, as as uh, safe as possible to come into and work out. And the state basically put her out of business. And her and her husband now spend all their time in Harrisburg um, looking at uh, legislation that hurts small businesses. And that was very interesting. And uh, there's a lot of things that you don't know that, that, at least I don't, that goes on in Harrisburg that we all should know about as small business owners. So that was very interesting. So again, people find us, we find people, but we're always looking for people that have value to the, to the uh, business community. I'm going to open it up. If anybody in the audience has a question or comment they want to make, I know a couple of you have said things. Un unmute yourself and fire away. I put Meanwhile. this in the chat, okay. but um, I'm Michelle from the Burke's Launchbox, and I just wanted to share how helpful Chuck has been over the last, um, I guess, uh, almost five years um, with the Burke's Launchbox and with my own business. I don't know. What do you think? 20? Yeah. <laughs> you helped me way early on. With we keep my adding these years up. It's getting bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when I need a resource or a connection or um, a contact and I and I just don't have um, that connection here in Berks County, um, I can ask Chuck and he almost always knows how to guide me and I so appreciate that. And I also appreciate that you um, share the um, events that the Burke's Lunch Box host. So thank you for both of those things, Chuck. I think I appreciate that whenever I have a need, you seem to have a, a great solution and uh, you know so many people. So thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks, Michelle. Chuck, that that's a, leads to a question of uh, somebody has an idea to start a business, just an idea. Mm -hmm. And they come to you. What, what do you do with them? What do you what do you advice do you give them? Where do you send them? How do you help them? For, for me personally, um, I want to know why they're why they're doing what they're doing. Um, you know, as as I uh, before everybody else got on the call, we were talking about um, uh, you know working with people you want to work with and uh, the trials and tribulations of having to work people because of your business. You have to work with everybody that walks in your door. Uh, so for me, it's about what's their purpose. Um, I I tend to want to work with people uh, who have a purpose and they're there to uh, help other people. Um, you know, if, if somebody has passion for something, I, I certainly recognize that, but I also will warn them that, uh, you know, uh, when things don't go well, well in your business, passion can go out the window pretty quick. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a process uh, uh, for me personally, I have to I have to like what they're doing. I have to have respect for who they are and what they do. And then are you really, really willing to make the necessary commitments and trying to get people to understand that 
Um, success in business is, is all about surrounding yourself with the right people. Um, I, I share this all the time. I know five people in my life that got into the right business at the right time and really did well and bless God bless them. They took advantage of the, of the, of the situation and did well. And every one of those five people started other businesses and they all failed or didn't do well. And the fact of the matter was they, they, they got lucky. I mean, really? And that's not the reality of business. The reality of business is surrounding yourself with the right people. And that's kind of what uh, we kind of look at Entrepreneurs Connection as being your unofficial advisory board, because we're going to tell you what we think and why we think it. Um, so um, I hope that answers the question, because there, there's got to be um, there's got to be a comfort level on both ends. Um, and it's it's got to be that they they have an opportunity for success. And and uh, there are a lot of good ideas out there that are never going to be successful. Um, I, I, I've been blessed to work with some really, really intelligent people. I, I, I have been the luckiest person in the last three years to have clients that are just off the charts. Um, and if it's one thing I've learned about working with the National Science Foundation and some of the clients I have that, um, it, you know, Sometimes working with very intelligent people aren't the best. I call it academic <laughs> arrogance, uh, and that's not meant. That's not meant to uh, belittle people. There are just some people that don't get it that they're so smart they think they know everything. And again, it's another. It's another one of those barriers to entry that people don't think about. There are a lot of barriers to entry, and they come in all ways, shapes, or form. Um, you know, I, I've always said uh, ignorance on fire will beat the hell out of intelligence on ice. <laughs> and if you can find those people uh, that are willing to make the sacrifices and, and listen to you and do the things that have to be done, because a lot of times we got to go, we have to go against who we are. I mean, I said to my daughter a couple of weeks ago, I've literally been three or four different people in my business life. I'm certainly not the knucklehead I was at 20. <laughs> Uh, and and I've learned from here to here to here, and you have to have that open mind. That that I think that's the most important thing. So, over over your long career, what what's the biggest challenge that you've had to face with all the different enterprises you've tried to do? Is that it? That's that's a really good question. I would. How do I answer that? Um, that's <laughs> so, a that's a really good question. Um, You know, I, 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 let me answer it this way. And I don't know if this makes sense or not. Um, there are only two things I have left to do in life. Um, one of them is to one day look in a mirror, eyeball to eyeball, and say you did all right. That I can look at myself and say, you know, you did all right. And I don't know if that's ever going to happen. And that's not a bad thing. I'm not unhappy with what I've done. I'm just, I just don't know if I've gotten to where I want to be. Um, and the other thing is that I don't want any what ifs. I, I, I've learned over the years with all the trials and tribulations, um, I, I would rather fall down flat on my face. And I, I, I've learned that there is no shame in failing. Uh, and it took a long, long time to learn that. So I would that that actually is a really good question. I would say learning the lessons that I've learned, um, and most of them that I wasn't aware of until they until they smacked me right in the face is what really were were the biggest challenges. And one final question: What do you think about the resources that are available here in Berks County for entrepreneurs and startup businesses? Do you, are there enough? Uh, oh, I I. I I think there's more than enough. I, I listen, and I said this at one of our earlier meetings, and and again, I I was just speaking my mind in the truth. I am I am really tired of hearing how um, Berks County is uh, less than uh, Lehigh, the Lehigh Valley, and Lancaster, and we're we're not up to speed with all these other. I'm tired of hearing it. I I really am. We have. The resources here, we have the people here. Um, I think the biggest thing is if we can all connect and work on this together. That I don't, I don't want to hear about Allentown and and I, I don't. I, that we here in Berks County need to do this. I hope that answers that question yeah, because you, 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 you yeah. struck a little bit of a nerve with that. 
<laughs> well, Chuck, thank you. This is a very interesting, very helpful program. Um, you get me some more information. We'll share that back with the people in terms of the uh, topics and stuff that you guys do. I'll share with them about how to access the uh, live stream, and we will share the video from this program with everybody. Thank you all for joining us. Really appreciate that. We have another spotlight program next week where we're going to focus on the Community First Fund, which is also uh, a major resource in the community to help uh, businesses, entrepreneurs, uh, just generally people in the, com in the, in the county. Uh, so hopefully you will join us for that as well. Thank you, everybody, and enjoy the rest of this very cold day. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.